OnePlus has announced an upgrade for the highly recommended OnePlus 3 dubbed the OnePlus 3T. I wouldn't normally cover such a small update, but the high profile nature of the device makes it worth mentioning. The difference is that inside there's a Snapdragon 821 chipset and faster Adreno 530 GPU, plus you can now buy a 128GB version. The battery is larger at 3400mAh, plus you get an upgraded front camera now at 16 megapixels. Under the hood in terms of software there's a new file system which, OnePlus says, will allow the device to open large apps and games faster. Well, maybe. It'll be about £30 more expensive than the original three, but then you're still getting absolutely cutting edge internals at half the price of the equivalent Samsung or Apple phones. And now for something completely different. Away from Google Premium Pixel, Samsung fiery flagships and Apple um, indecently priced iPhones, even away from traditional budget options like the Moto G, Honor and Wiley Fox ranges, there's a whole ecosystem where you can have the best of both worlds. High specifications and low prices. I'm talking about Chinese phones, not just made in China, but Chinese brands now being helpfully imported and sold over in the West by a number of resellers. Of course, occasionally such manufacturers sell directly across the world. OnePlus is the best example of this following in the footsteps of Oppo, perhaps, with the 3 and now 3T, the OnePlus 3T, as mentioned in the news, setting the tech world on fire with genuine top-end build and specs at half the price of traditional flagships. But you can go even cheaper, much cheaper still, yet without much decrease in specs or quality by buying directly from resellers. The caveats are still there and that you have to be very careful that you're buying the variant of a phone which has a global ROM flash from it, i.e. with English as the default language and with the Google services and Play Store installed. Plus, there's often a shipping delay of an extra few days or even weeks. Plus, you're somewhat at the mercy of the manufacturer in terms of OS and security updates. But choose wisely and you can get a cracking smartphone for not very much at all. This is perhaps the best current example, the new Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, available with the global ROM based on Android 6, available from outlets like geekbuying.com for around £150 all in. So well under half the price of the OnePlus 3, my number one pick in my most recent top five phones. So what do you get in the Redmi Note 4? A full ultra premium aluminium unibody with 2.5D 1080p oleophobic 5.5 inch screen IPS LCD display in the hand. This is absolutely indistinguishable from the likes of the HTC 10 and Google Pixel, which is flipping amazing. <laughs> under a third the price. There's a responsive fingerprint scanner on the back. It powers on and authenticates as you'd expect. Quite stunning so far. And once powered up and in use, the Redmi Note 4 flies thanks to a high-end Helio 10-core X20 chipset and 3 gig of RAM. It feels as snappy, see what I did there, as the Snapdragon 810 and 820 over in the Qualcomm world. Though, as per my last phone show rant, don't get too hung up on chipset specs. There's 64 gigabytes of built-in storage too, plus micro SD if you don't need the dual SIM facility. And you know I love good imaging on a phone here. There's a 13 megapixel f over 2.0 unit with phase detection, autofocus and two-tone LED flash. And results are very good indeed. See these samples. It's not quite up with the very best in the phone world, but it's evidently easily good enough. Video capture is at 1080p and pretty smooth with the optional electronic image stabilization enabled. So this is single-handed use, very, very smooth on the viewfinder in terms of the stabilization and software, but uh, I think the rendered version that you're seeing is much jerkier and I can only imagine that's some kind of bug that Xiaomi will be working on. Um, here looking at uh, experimenting with focus, shall we say. Very uh, weak winter sunshine and rather blustery in a very autumnal rather dead and dying garden i'm afraid but uh, it'll give you an idea of stability and smoothness or lack thereof you do get full stereo audio capture though at high quality the front camera is 5 megapixel and also f over 2.0 so very decent indeed then there's a monster 4100 milliamp hour battery how on earth have Xiaomi squeezed this in 4100 giving super battery life in my tests easily getting through a day or two aided by Android 6's Doze, of course. Again, you have to kind of pinch yourself when remembering the price. 
A few other hardware notes, the uh, Redmi Note's speaker is mono and at the bottom right, the left grille is a cosmetic dummy. Volume and quality aren't terrible, here's a demo. There's full volume. It's a typical mid-price phone speaker. But it's not going to blow anyone away either. The otherwise a great display is pretty poor in direct sunlight, at least compared to other 2016 smartphones I have in stock here. Probably a limitation of the bill of materials available for the screen component and possibly forgivable for the price. Other basic specs include full Wi-Fi up to 5 gigahertz and AC spec, voice over LTE and an infrared blaster at the top. There's two amp charging via micro USB, so no explicit quick charge out of the box, i.e. with the supplied five volt charger. In theory, there's MediaTek's own, quote, Pump Express <laughs> quick charge tech. But good luck getting hold of compatible chargers since they're far, far rarer than quick charge 3.0 units. Mind you, after the Galaxy Note 7 fiasco and my own safety worries over fast charging, I'm more than happy with a two amp top up here. With this large battery, that's two hours for a full charge, but half an hour wide up will still easily get you through a long evening out, for example. At which point, given the crazy £150 price all in, you're going to want to know what the catch is. After all, most top end smartphones are a lot more expensive. So what's missing here? Actually, not that much on the hardware side. There's no LTE band 20, which will affect quite a few people wanting full on 4G in the UK and some other European countries. And there's no NFC. This seems to be a Chinese thing. Maybe they don't use this for payments over there and connections in China. Anyway, no Android Pay for you here. The biggest difference between the Redmi Note 4 and what you see in, say, a um, Google Pixel or HTC device, though, is the Android skin and software. Though based on Android 6, the trailless launcher and user interface elements are all part of MIUI 8 and our Xiaomi's own. More to the point, so are almost all the applications. This is just about as far as you can get away from stock or pure Android, Google style. Everything works, it's just different. It ties into Xiaomi's online ecosystem at quite a few junctures in terms of backup, sync and services. However, don't be too dismayed since, assuming you've bought the right version of the phone from your reseller, the global ROM includes the Google Play Store and services, so you can set about installing all your own Google favourites and hiding away any Xiaomi apps you don't want in home screen folders. It's quite a bit of work and setup time, but you can craft a more familiar stock-like experience if you so wish. And some of the Xiaomi applications aren't that bad at all. For example, the web browser with built-in night mode. Here we go, tap on night mode. <laughs> It'll be too dim for you to see here on film, but great for saving your eyes when you're trying to browse the web deep in the dark of night. Uh, your Android controls here are capacitive, which is great in that they don't take up room from content, making the Redmi Note 4 seem even more phablet-like, despite the very comfortable dimensions in the hand. Uh, they're the wrong way round, of course, Samsung style with back on the right here. I know, I know, it's a subjective thing. In summary, this Xiaomi phone does indeed give you quite a bit more hardware bang for your buck than traditional Western distributed lower end mid-range handsets but at the cost of being harder and slower to buy. Now, in theory, you won't get caught for import duty in the UK if you opt for airmail shipment rather than an expensive courier, but that's a chance you'll have to take. Xiaomi are pretty good at software updates over the air, though the security level of the OS here was still back at May 2016, so not quite cutting edge. There's a built-in security suite in the phone, complete with antivirus definitions. I imagine that malware is a much bigger problem in the Chinese phone world than it is over here in the West. Probably the biggest pain once you have the phone is setting it up exactly as you want it with the Google apps of your choice. But hey, you're a geek or you wouldn't be watching this and you enjoy phone setup time, really, don't you? A fascinating glimpse, though, into the world of smartphone value away from traditional Western brands and models anyway, and a very handsome smartphone that I really enjoyed trying out.